own vice president is asked to turn over key documents. Trump saying he never offered Ukraine a quid pro quo to investigate his political rivals, including Joe Biden. But tonight, newly released text messages tell a different story. The pipe bombs arrest. The Florida woman in custody tonight, allegedly obsessed with mass murder and the shocking arsenal discovered by investigators. Two dozen bombs, more than 20 knives and a hatchet. Police say she wanted to, quote, hurt people. Why authorities are praising her parents. The dramatic kidnapping rescue, the police chase, a suspect with a victim inside his car, taking off on foot, turning and firing on police. The entire shootout caught on camera. Also tonight, the harshest sentencing yet involving a parent in the Varsity Blues scandal who spent $100,000 and used a photo of someone else's daughter playing water polo. The pictures coming in, a massive plane slamming into the ground, rescue teams swarming the crash site, a survivor pulled from the wreckage. Plus, the jurors in the Amber Geiger trial breaking their silence about that high-profile sentencing and what the victim's brother said about that emotional courtroom embrace. And can you feel the heat? The summer swelter now deep into fall as millions suffer through record-breaking temperatures. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. And good evening. It's great to have you with us on a very busy Friday night. I'm Tom Yamas, in for David. And we begin tonight with several breaking stories, including new major developments in the impeachment showdown. Just moments ago, House Democrats issuing a subpoena to the White House to turn over key documents related to President Trump and Ukraine. The president slamming the House inquiry, insisting his calls for Ukraine and China to investigate rival Joe Biden and his son have nothing to do with the 2020 election. And now, House Democrats also demanding Vice President Pence turn over documents for the impeachment inquiry as well. Republican Senator Mitt Romney calling President Trump's latest actions both wrong and appalling. ABC's chief White House correspondent Jonathan Carl leads us off. Today, President Trump insisted his calls for Ukraine and now China to investigate his potential 2020 opponent, Joe Biden, have nothing to do with politics. I don't care about Biden's campaign, but I do care about corruption. Yet today, the Trump re-election campaign told ABC News it's spending $1 million this weekend on ads attacking Biden and his son Hunter on the very issues the president is asking Ukraine and China to investigate. Have you had foreign leaders for any corruption investigation that don't involve your political opponent? That is, are there other cases where you, you know, I, we would have to look. Today, Senator Mitt Romney put out a blistering statement saying, when the only American citizen President Trump singles out for China's investigation is his political opponent in the midst of the Democratic nomination process, it strains credulity to suggest that it is anything other than politically motivated. Romney called the president's outreach to China and Ukraine, quote, wrong and appalling. The only other Republican senator who ventured to criticize the president, Ben Sass of Nebraska, who put out a terse statement saying, quote, Americans don't look to Chinese commies for the truth. Contrast that with Florida's Marco Rubio. Do you think it's okay for President Trump to ask China to launch an investigation of Joe Biden and Hunter Biden? I don't know if that's a real request or him just uh, needling the press, knowing that you guys were going to get outraged by it. In Iowa, a constituent practically begged Senator Joni Ernst to say something about the president's actions. Where is the line? When are you guys going to say enough and stand up and say, you know what, I'm not backing any of this? Okay, so President Trump, um, if I can say yay, nay, whatever, the president is going to say what the president is going to do. I understand it's a non answer answer, and I understand. I get it, I know what you're saying. But I can't speak so for him. Funny. I'll just say that I can't speak for him. I know you can't speak for him, but you can speak for yourself. Some tense moments right there for Republicans, and John Carl joins us now from the White House. And John, you've learned President Trump reached out to Republicans today trying to rally support. Tom, I'm told that the president made a surprise appearance on a conference call with Republican members of the House. Uh, he said that he had done nothing wrong. He has nothing to hide. He portrayed the impeachment effort as an effort by Democrats to undo the 2016 election. This comes as Republicans have really been without a unifying message on how to respond to impeachment. It may well have been the beginning of an effort to come up with one. Tom? Jonathan Carl with that new reporting tonight. John, thank you. Now to those new developments just coming in. 
The House issuing a subpoena to the White House and pulling Vice President Pence deeper into the impeachment inquiry. Three House committees asking for any Ukraine-related documents, and now we're learning more about the text messages made public, appearing to detail the Trump administration's pressuring of Ukraine. ABC's Mary Bruce is on the Hill. Tonight, Democrats are now reaching deep into the White House, investigating the role of the vice president, issuing a subpoena to Mike Pence, demanding documents about any role you may have played in the effort to pressure Ukraine to investigate the president's political rivals. We have concerns about the role the vice president uh, played in this uh, presidential extortion uh, scheme. Mr. Messer, what are you going to tell them? And now we're learning new details from the first eyewitness to testify before Congress, former U.S. envoy to Ukraine. Kurt Volker. In his opening statement obtained by ABC News, Volker describes a president obsessed with a debunked conspiracy theory that Ukraine, not Russia, meddled in the 2016 election to help Democrats. And Volker handed over a trove of text messages that appear to show top U.S. officials dangling a potential White House visit as leverage to get Ukraine to investigate Trump's rivals. In one text, Volker tells an aide to Ukrainian President Zelensky, Heard from White House, assuming President Z convinces Trump he will investigate, get to the bottom of what happened in 2016, we will nail down date for visit to Washington. That message was sent just hours before the phone call that sparked this impeachment inquiry, when Trump personally asked the Ukrainian leader to, quote, do us a favor and investigate the Democrats and Joe Biden. Even some Republicans say the texts are troubling. Some of the, the text messages individually is concerning. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Volker says he tried to convince the president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, that Biden had done nothing wrong, telling lawmakers the suggestion that Biden would be influenced in his duties as vice president by money for his son simply has no credibility to me. I know him as a man of integrity. But those words seemed to have no effect. And why is it so hard to get Biden investigated? All right, Mary Bruce joins us now from Capitol Hill. And Mary, you're learning that just moments ago, Congress issued a subpoena to the White House. Tom, Democrats have just issued this subpoena to the White House for records related to Ukraine, saying in a statement that the president's actions, quote, have left us with no choice but to issue this subpoena. And if the White House continues to stonewall and refuses to comply with this, well, Democrats say that will only boost their case for impeachment. Tom. Mary Bruce tonight with that breaking news on the new subpoena. Mary, thank you. We move on now to the explosive discovery authorities seizing a cache of pipe bombs from a home in Florida. Parents discovering the stockpile calling police on their 27-year-old daughter. Authorities allegedly finding two dozen bombs, you see them right here, in her bedroom, and enough explosive material to possibly kill hundreds of people. Here's ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Tonight, Florida authorities say this young woman was obsessed with how to kill people and was secretly amassing a shocking arsenal in her home. The amount of highly destructive materials we found in this home were astonishing. Sheriff deputies claimed 27-year-old Michelle Coates had two dozen pipe bombs loaded with nails and screws for shrapnel, 23 knives, bows and arrows, pellet guns, and an assortment of DVDs and books about assassins, serial murderers, and mass killings, ranging from the Columbine massacre to the Oklahoma City bombing. If used, these bombs could have caused catastrophic damage and harm to hundreds, even thousands of people. Authorities say when she was arrested, Coates said she wanted to, quote, hurt people. But this story comes with a tragic and simultaneously noble twist. Coates was turned in by her own parents, who discovered the arsenal and called police. If found guilty in all the charges, Coates could face up to 15 years in prison. Her parents must be devastated. Tom? Pierre, thank you. To politics tonight and breaking news from the campaign trail concerning Senator Bernie Sanders. The presidential candidate leaving Desert Springs Hospital in Las Vegas a short time ago. You see him right there for the first time, and doctors now revealing he suffered a heart attack. Let's get right to ABC's senior national correspondent, Terry Moran. Terry, this is big news from the campaign trail. It sure is, Tom, and as you saw in that video there, Bernie Sanders left the hospital, walked out himself. He says he was feeling great, and he's heading home to Vermont for a few days. 
a short time off, he says. But as you point out, doctors at that hospital confirming that when Bernie Sanders showed up complaining of chest pain, he was diagnosed as having a myocardial infarction. That's a heart attack. And they inserted the two stents to unblock the artery that caused it. All other arteries were normal, they said. Bernie Sanders planned to get back out on the campaign trail and attend that October 15th Democratic debate. Whether his health is an issue there, he will have to address it with voters down the trail. Tom? Terry, thank you. There's also new developments tonight in the college admissions cheating scandal. A fifth parent sentenced in Boston, a Napa winemaker receiving five months in prison, the longest of any parent so far. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. Tonight, Napa winemaker Agustin Huneus slapped with the toughest sentence yet for any parent in the Varsity Blues scandal, five months behind bars. Huneus had agreed to pay $300,000 to rig his daughter's college entrance exams and to exaggerate her athletic skills, sending this water polo photo to USC as part of her bogus application. It turns out that's not his daughter. In a phone call recorded by the FBI, ringleader Rick Singer told Huneus he wanted to make sure that you and I are both on the same page about telling the IRS the cash was intended as a donation for underserved kids, not bribes. Huneus replying, dude, dude, what do you think? I'm a moron? Huneus saying in court, today is a hard day. I want to pay for my crime and atone for the harm I have caused. And Tom, 14 other parents have also pleaded guilty, including actress Felicity Huffman. She'll spend 14 days in jail later this month. Actress Lori Loughlin is fighting the charges. Tom. Gio, thank you. Next tonight, the record heat across the South. 150 cities reporting their all-time hottest temperatures for October this week. And at the same time, the Northeast getting ready for its first freeze of the season. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano live in Gainesville, Florida tonight, where, Rob, it is a hot one. It is back into the 90s again today, Tom, with record shattering temperatures from the Carolinas across Georgia into Alabama. Montgomery hit 102 today, but the script has certainly flipped in the Northeast. Sub freezing temperatures on tap tonight with freeze warnings up for Pennsylvania, New York, and northern New England and Maine, and a frosty morning to start the day for other areas. Here in the South, relief is in sight, but that front's going to squeeze another day of potentially record breaking numbers into the 90s. We do see some cooling coming on Sunday, and especially Monday, and that cooling trend can't come soon enough for the folks sweating it out here. Here down south. Tom? So true. All right, Rob, thank you. Overseas now, Prince Harry announcing plans to sue two major tabloids for alleged phone hacking. Harry accusing the owners of The Sun and The Daily Mirror of intercepting voicemail messages. ABC's Lama Hassan is in London. Tonight, Prince Harry stepping up his fight with the British tabloids, this time taking aim at the owners of The Sun and The Daily Mirror after his voicemails were allegedly hacked. Allegations of phone hacking have happened before for William, Harry and Palace aides, but Harry's bringing up the past again. He's confident he can win this trial and they have enough evidence. It comes just days after the Duchess of Sussex filed her own lawsuit against the Mail on Sunday for publishing a personal letter she penned to her estranged father, Thomas Markle. The prince accusing the tabloids of creating, quote, lie after lie at her expense, even invoking his mother, Princess Diana. I lost my mother, and now I watch my wife falling victim to the same powerful forces. <laughs> The couple fresh off a successful tour of Southern Africa, where they were warmly welcomed and widely praised for their charity work. Tom, tonight there is no comment from the Daily Mirror, but Rupert Murdoch's News UK, which publishes The Sun, says they are aware of the Prince's claim. Tom? Lama Hassan for us tonight from London. Lama, thank you. Back here at home in the murder trial, followed by millions across the country. Two jurors breaking their silence about the sentence given to former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger for shooting and killing a man in his own apartment. And we're now hearing from the victim's brother. ABC's Marcus Moore is in Dallas tonight. Two of the jurors who convicted former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger of murder tonight taking us into that jury room. There was a lot of crying. A lot of crying. And prosecutors were asking for 28 years. You all landed at 10. I told everyone because we all agree that it was a mistake, and I don't think Bo would want to take harsh vengeance. I think he would want to forgive her. Geiger shot and killed 26-year-old Botham John when she entered his apartment, mistaking it for hers. You can't compare this case to any of those other officers killing unarmed black men. Those officers that kill unarmed black men, when they got out, they went back to living their lives. Amber Geiger, she showed remorse in that 
she's gonna have to deal with that for the rest of her life. Can, can I give her a hug, please? This extraordinary moment of forgiveness from John's brother right after sentencing, giving these jurors some peace of mind. It kind of helped.